Hi guys, it's Monique with Okanagan Makes. I actually haven't made a video since I made that one about my daughter being ill. Way, it feels like seven years ago and it's what, a month? Month and a half? Crazy times. The videos that I've put out since then, and I apologize there have been so few, uh, I filmed in February, like the 1st of February. Uh, so it was kind of surreal editing the last video I put out about that vintage, uh, Vienna vintage hat with the pleats, because I kept, as I was watching it, thinking I have no idea what it is that's coming as I was editing it. So it was a little odd, a little surreal. So I felt like it was time to check in and make a video. I apologize, like I said, that there have not been uh, as many coming out recently as I would have liked. It's been busy for multiple different reasons. Our work slowed way, way, way down uh, initially. And that was a concern for us. And so I was quite distracted with worry over whether or not we were going to have to close our business. Uh, it would just be temporary for us. It is just the two of us. Uh, we don't have other employees. So I wasn't saddled with that burden of worrying about people being dependent upon me for their living. But we do work in construction and construction was shut down everywhere around us. So it was a little frightening. However, people seem in the past week to be calling again. I think that the initial shock is over and people are realizing that we can still design <laughs> for when we're able to get back to construction. New England is kind of interesting in how it works because we can't always be doing construction year round depending upon weather. So there are definitely regular ebbs and flows to our work. So we're used to absorbing that. This is actually one of our busiest times of the year because everybody's gearing up for the breaking, breaking ground in our spring and summer uh, seasons. So it was, it was very interesting going from probably a dozen and a half jobs kind of in progress or, or that we knew were coming to each having one job on our desk. That was it. And luckily they were large jobs, so they have kind of sustained. I mean, I haven't worked 40 hours uh, since this started, but it's been enough to keep us going. And like I said, the phones are ringing again, so that's probably a good thing. Now I have to try to buckle down and focus, which has been also very difficult. At least I have found it to be difficult to focus. And we're having good days and bad days um, emotionally about it all. Uh, I have days where I don't think about it a lot. Um, I am very selective with what I'm watching as far as news and media goes. I have a website that tracks my state's information and I check that once a day and that's about it. It is what it is. I don't need to see the suffering. I know that the suffering is happening. I did watch the last night the uh, Global Citizen concert was on. That was very emotional. I found it to be very emotional. Uh, so I didn't watch it for too long. I watched some of the performances and I just have to say uh, some of them were great. Some of them, <laughs> but it was a nice distraction. And I appreciate that Lady Gaga <laughs> took her time and, and organized it. I mean, I'm continuously being surprised at the venues through which we're being sustained. I do want to take just a minute to say if you are an essential worker and you're out there and you're fighting this invisible enemy, you have my deepest gratitude. Truly, I hope you are safe. I hope that you are being treated well by the people that you are working hard for. And I hope that you have a mask. As somebody who has spent a month making masks in almost all of my weekend has been spent sewing masks. I hope you have them. I am not somebody that can churn out mask after mask after mask for sale. I can't do it. Emotionally, it is too difficult for me. So I'm super grateful for people uh, like Jane at Scraptastic Yarns, who is doing that for people. Uh, I am providing them to my friends and my family and a few people that I know kind of through friends or family that really need them. And basically, 
this is my last weekend. I'm doing this right now because uh, I wanted to make sure that I got this in before I started sewing for the day, which is coming up. Uh, I am trying to finish my last batch of masks and I'm hoping to take a good long break from it. I would like to not associate sewing with this for the rest of my life. That is also par partially why you have not gotten many videos from me. My weekends have been spent at my sewing machine and there are about a bazillion tutorials on YouTube for how to make so many different types of masks that I did not feel the need to put out a, a tutorial. I just didn't want to add to the noise, if that makes sense. Maybe next video or something, I'll show you my completed masks. I have not made any completed any masks for myself yet. Um, there was one last week that I finished sewing for myself, but I haven't threaded the elastic or anything in it. I have another, I think, nine on my sewing desk that I'm working on this weekend. One of which I am going to also save for myself and one for my husband. So that has been going on. Uh, I have gone through an astronomical amount of money in those supplies that I've used for that. I haven't charged people for them other than a couple people, just some shipping. But I have run out of my ribbon. I have run out of a lot. I did actually manage to get one thing of elastic, but it's not braided, so it frays, but it's better than nothing, you know? And I was able to get that probably two weeks ago. But every scrap of elastic, gone. All of my ribbon that was suitable size, gone. Um, I was actually used macrame cord on uh, one mask so that um, it, it kind of, it goes around the back of the head, feeds through, and then you tie it. So it's one piece. Um, I have given away more yarn needles than I can count at this point with hats. I mean, uh, hats with masks so that um, people can thread the elastic through the sides if they want to take the elastic out. Because like I said, mine, the, what I was able to get is fraying. Uh, so they don't want to wash it. I feel like I'm doing a little better emotionally in the grand scheme of things. I had a couple of really difficult weeks there. There was a lot of not being able to get off the couch after work, uh, a lot of just crying and feeling so demoralized and sad and scared and worried. I have flashes, I think, of clarity on just how life-changing this is going to be for all of us and those moments can be really striking if you're having those moments i hope that you are being kind and gentle to yourself because i think we we kind of need that now one thing i have done is uh, i have refocused on our diet uh, i last year was diagnosed as diabetic and i have PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, which I've had for years and years and years, um, probably since I was a teenager, actually. I also have um, high blood pressure. It's not the highest high blood pressure, but it's high enough that my doctor put me on medication for it. So these are all um, things that are not good. <laughs> they're not good in regular life, and they're definitely not good right now. And I uh, went keto last year. Dave came with me to try to address the diabetes and uh, my numbers were never astronomically high. They were always able to, you know, my A1C, I think at the highest it ever was, was 6.7. And um, I know for a lot of diabetics, they would love to have an A1C of 6.7. Uh, I, that wasn't, I'm not interested in going down that road. So I went keto and within two months, my A1C was 5.4 which is not only not diabetic, it's not even pre-diabetic. And I've been pre-diabetic since I was about 22 years old. So there you go. Uh, my insulin was five times what it should have been a year ago. Within two months, it was, uh, I think it's supposed to be six. Mine was 49. Two months later, it was 14. Two months after that, it was nine. So it's coming down. Well, through the holidays, I, I veered from strict keto. 
and we we did a little dirty keto and I I let carbs sneak back into my life I mean the bottom line is is I'm a carb addict it just is what it is and uh, it's hard it's hard to eat this way so I really got myself in line and said you know what I was having some pity party eating uh, when this began some comfort food like I ate some mac and cheese that is like not good for me and it just occurred to me that I was not serving myself by comorbidities if I do catch this so I uh, buckled down I refocused and uh, I lost about 15 pounds in two weeks which is I know a lot of people think that's great and in many ways it is great Harry's here he might bump the camera but losing that kind of weight that fast causes uh, health symptoms, you know, like you can, it can be very uncomfortable. And uh, so I went through another round of keto flu, which also kept me from making some videos because I didn't feel good. I mean, I just was not feeling well at all. Lots of uh, body aches, lots of cramping. Uh, my, you know, my muscles cramp terrible when I start keto. I have to take really a lot of magnesium. Headaches, you know, digestive upset. And that made it quite difficult because, of course, a lot of that are the same symptoms. So there was a lot of watching myself and being sure that it was keto. And I'm quite sure at this point it is. And I seem to have finally, this past week, leveled out a little bit. I did increase the amount of carbs that I was allowing myself each day because it was it was just a little bit too rough. It was a little bit too hard. But I am back on that track. I am watching very, very closely my sugar alcohols intake because I think that I am one of those people that even though it doesn't mess with my blood sugar, I think that it does affect my insulin. And I have noticed that if I have too much of like swerve or you know, it's, it, uh, erythritol, or monk fruit that it will stall my losses so for those who don't know since last May I've lost 50 pounds and I lost that on keto and I had gained back probably 15 since the holidays and I've now lost that 15 again so I'm back where I was before the holidays and hoping that it will continue uh, just maybe not at that rate. Uh, losing weight that fast can really take its toll on your body. So uh, that is why they say try to do it, you know, gradually. And that is what I'm shooting for is a, a more reasonable and more able to be maintained uh, pace. If you can hear uh, something, it is Harry. He's playing with a bead on the floor. So I apologize, but it is what it is. I'm not getting up. So that is life right now. I hope that you all are doing well and I hope that you are maintaining your mental health and perhaps taking steps to be sure that your physical health is also as optimal as it can be because I think that's going to be really important now and in the months ahead. And please, 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 I understand that everybody can't be home 24 hours a day. Some people have to go out, but if you don't have to be out, please stay home, please. I do get it. I had to go out yesterday to pick up a grocery order. We were completely out of fresh vegetables and I just really needed some fresh vegetables. Like it's incredibly difficult to do keto without any fresh vegetables. And I had, I had really put it off as long as I could. Unfortunately, I waited up until 1 a.m. three nights last week to get that grocery pickup time and uh, they were out of half the fresh vegetables that I needed. So I had to put in an order with Whole Foods, which luckily I was able to get a delivery order from them um, on Monday. So I will have the rest of what I needed so that we can get through another few weeks with that. I try to only use Whole Foods when I absolutely have to because it is very expensive. And I'm just very lucky that they deliver to my teeny little town. That is what's going on on the, the day to day. Uh, like I said, um, work, keto, mask making. That has been my life. My phone looks like it wants to die. So let me really quickly go over um, some yarn that I got, some works in progress that I have, and some uh, finished objects. I will show you the finished objects first. Uh, one of them, this is just a cowl. Um, it was a darn good yarn. 
box that I had gotten. I did darn good yarn for like three months, I don't know, a year ago or so. But I, I gotta be real, I, I didn't really love most of the yarn that they sent me. I didn't like, this feels nice and it's like silk and stuff, but it's like, I don't know. It's just not my style. But I never used any of the yarn and I realized that it was in my stash. And so I took one out and uh, they had this pattern and it's it's all right. You know, it came out good. It's I didn't instead of finishing it with a um, here, let me is this going to focus instead of finishing it with a slip stitch. I finished it with a uh, crab stitch instead because I thought it was just uh, more interesting looking. I do wish that it was either long enough to double around my neck or smaller <laughs> because it just hangs down and looks, I mean, it just, you know, it, it just, that doesn't, that doesn't do anything for me, but it's not, you know, if I try to double it, then I'm choking. So, uh, I, I'm glad I finished it. I'm glad I used it. Um, if I were to, uh, to use that pattern again, I would I would either, like I said, make it shorter or make it longer. I found the length to be uh, inconvenient for use. The other thing I finished was my daughter's Lost Soul shawl. It's done. Finally, this thing is done. I've been working on this damn thing for like a year and a half. I gotta be honest with you, this is not a hard pattern. It's a lot of counting and I hated every minute of it. I don't know what it was about this pattern that I disliked, but I definitely disliked it. Um, I'm glad that I made it for her. She will love it. There's no need to do a pattern review video for that one. All It literally would be me saying, never again. And it's not the complexity. I don't mind making complex things. I think I was bored with it after about the sixth row. The novelty of seeing the skulls develop wore off real quick. Those are my two finished objects. I haven't made any progress on any of the other, <laughs> Harry, please, on any of the other uh, projects that I showed you in my March uh, works in progress. I did frog the Hobby Wonderland uh, wrap. I decided definitely for sure life was too short and I didn't feel like doing it. So there was that. I want to give a shout out to Derek the Knitwit for a moment. Derek, I think it's great that you put up those knitting videos uh, in the past few weeks because I had often wondered if I, if I would like knitting. And when you put those videos up, it kind of motivated me to actually buy a set of knitting needles and try it. So here you go, Derek. This is what... I managed to do because you put out some knitting videos. <laughs> Look at um, it is just a knit stitch. That's all I've done. I've just been practicing. And honestly, this is probably the fourth thing that I started, got about this far and then frogged because I would like drop a stitch and I didn't know how to fix it. But I really appreciate you put out those little videos. It was it was good and it motivated me to do that. So thanks a bunch. I appreciate that. My nieces apparently love a show and I want to say she said it was called Fancy Nancy, maybe. Um, they love Fancy Nancy. I'm going to say that's it. And they're obsessed with Paris. And so she messaged me to ask me if I knew how to make a beret. So I've been trying out beret patterns. And this one, I this one's basically done. But I don't know if it will be too big for their heads. I mean, these are little, little peanuts. So I'm going to try one more pattern and then maybe, and they wanted pink. They wanted pink berets. So um, that is what I've been working on for them. I don't generally uh, point out that I make doilies. It doesn't seem to be a popular thing. And so I, I just don't assume that people will care, but I guess I'm going to start including them because they are my works in progress and it is stuff I'm working on. I am working on this wisp weave pattern. It um, is using size 10 cotton thread, 1.75 millimeter hook. I'm just doing it in white. So far, I have this. And I don't think you can see all the texture, but it's really fun, fun, fun. Oh, there you go. So you can kind of get an idea. That is one thing that I have started and been working on. And I... I do make doilies. They aren't something that I generally sit and like work on until I complete it. It's something that sits in, in my, I have a nightmare corner <laughs> of the living room next to where I sit on the couch. 
Um, it is such a mess because I have like stacks of, of uh, projects there. But this sits in one of my containers and I just pick it up and work on it whenever I feel like it. And then the other thing that I started was the Lost in Time Shawl by Joanna Lindahl. And I am using this twister. And this is what I have. So far. Not a whole lot yet, but I love, love the texture. Isn't that beautiful? It's so pretty. So pretty! And I'm loving it even more as I get into like the greens and the colors. You can really tell. So I'm really enjoying that. I have my Winifred shawl downstairs. That was in my works in progress in March too as well, I believe. Uh, I frogged the one that I had started because I decided that the yarn really wasn't working well with the pattern. And I have chosen a new uh, yarn and that is downstairs, but I have not yet started the shawl. But it is kind of in progress in so far as I have begun thinking about it and planning for it. I still have my temperature scarf. I have not done even one row on that. I have not made any progress on my girlfriend's son's shawl, but that is still down there as well. So now really briefly, I did put in a order at Yarnspirations while, uh, while they were having a sale on Red Heart Super Saver because I knew that even though I haven't gotten anything done on my temperature scarf, I knew that I was going to run out of specific colors pretty quick and I was going to need extra. So I got uh, a jumbo of the Super Saver in the colorway Turqua. I got a jumbo in the colorway Spring Green. And then I got a small one of the Delft Blue. And I have to tell you, this is the hardest blue to get. If I had known, I would never have chosen this blue to start with. I highly suggest that if you are looking to do a blue, do not choose this one because half the places that carry Super Saver don't carry this particular blue. And if they do, it's always sold out. Um, so that's a pain in the ass. I don't suggest it. And then I got one skein of the Cherry Red, uh, which I knew I was going to need but had not gotten. I got three skeins of this Sugar and Cream cotton in the colorway Potpourri. It's just like ecru with some pink and you can't even see the bluish green. There's one. So it's pink and purple and like a little bluish green, like little confetti looking thing in there. I got three of those. And uh, actually, I just sh showed you on that knitting. I That's what I've been practicing with is this. I got a skein of Burnout Baby Velvet in the colorway Misty Gray. And then downstairs is also this same thing in white. Crochet Crowd had a video out in the last three weeks, maybe, I don't know, of this little cat stuffy. And it was this little round fat cat and it was used this yarn. And so I, I, as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to make one of those. That is the cutest damn thing. So I got this yarn to make it. I don't know if you guys recall, I had used, when I made, designed my hat, uh, I had used the Red Heart Colorscape yarn in the colorway Montreal and I, that video is still coming guys. Uh, I've been working on it, but, uh, I loved that yarn. I mean, loved it. I loved how it looked. I loved working with it. So I had one skein of that left when I finished my hat and I decided that was not enough. So I bought myself another skein of the, uh, and like I said, it is Red Heart Colorscapes in the colorway Montreal, and that's what it looks like. Love it. Uh, so I got one of those, and then I got two of also Colorscapes in the colorway Dublin. Harry, what are you doing? Harry is making such a ruckus. My, you would think he was like a 700 pound dog. I don't know, he's really, the cats I think are freaked out by us being freaked out at times you know what I mean they they have been acting out weirdly and I think it's because we're putting off weird vibes sometimes just because there's discomfort you know it's there's not as much comfort in life at the moment red heart colorscapes uh, I got this with my daughter in mind she loves olive green and I got two skeins thinking that I could make her a nice hat 
and maybe matching cowl. And then I got one skein of, uh, again, also in the colorway Shanghai. I thought it was really sweet. I just thought it was a real fun mix of colors. And I bought this actually with the giveaway, 200 subscriber giveaway in mind. And then the last thing that I ordered was two balls of the Red Heart Roll With It Sparkle. And this colorway, let me show you, is called Magic. And I love it. I love it so much. I have two two balls of this already. And I knew that I wanted to make myself something significant with it, either a huge wrap or something. I mean, there's like 560 yards per cake. And I had two and I bought two more. So I have almost 2000 yards of this to make myself something absolutely wonderful that I can wrap up in and just love, 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 love. I don't know if it will be a wrap or a sweater or a poncho or I have no idea. So that is the yarns that I acquired. It wasn't a lot and I've been trying to be really quite a bit more responsible because we were kind of uncertain about the financial Im impact this is going to have on us. And also because I have a lot of yarn and I'm just trying to be better about it. I did take a little bit of my tax return and ordered three skeins of yarn from Expression Fiber Arts this past week. She has a new yarn base called Mirage Fingering Yarn and I love fingering weight yarn. And she had the most gorgeous colorway. And it was, uh, again, like a 25% off sale. So I took advantage of that and ordered myself three skeins and I already know what I want to do with it. That is the big update, guys. I uh, hope that you're all doing well. Thank you so much uh, for spending time with me. And I hope to see you soon. Bye, guys.